What is the most critical thing that a director should do when reading and reviewing a script? Okay, good question. And this is one of the hardest things to do. And I can tell you, as a director, it's really, really difficult. You get a script, you're starting to read it, and <coughs> we're assuming before you start reading, it's something that you're being asked to consider to direct or along those lines. This may be something you're going to work on. <coughs> or not, but let's assume that you are. The most difficult thing to do while reading it is to not direct it. Now I can tell you as a director, I start reading something and I see directorial problems immediately or directorial opportunities immediately and I go, oh wow, I know who I could cast in that role or I know where we could shoot. Uh, suddenly my mind is directing. My mind is figuring out how to get this thing that I'm reading, which I haven't finished reading yet, up onto the screen. And I haven't given the story a chance to impact me. I have taken a side street. The hardest thing to do is sit down. Can I sit down with this story, which happens to be a script, but it's a story in script form, and can I just read it and emotionally respond to it? Just respond. Like we all do when we go to see a movie, hopefully. We sit down and just respond. It's going to be my first and only time I get to do this without knowing the story. So my response the first time through is really crucial. So what I suggest to a lot of directors to do, and this is in one of my books, um, directing feature films, it's a thing I call the script wash. Can you sit down with a script, take a script, nothing written in it except the script itself, no, none of your notes, read it, and as you're reading it and as you're responding it, can you note what your response is? Not your directing eye, your reader eye, your audience eye. When you're moved, when you feel sad, when you feel confused, when you feel intrigued, wow, what's going to happen to him? Ooh, this is an interesting, oh, I wasn't expecting that. In other words, can you note, and I'm seriously, I'm mean it seriously, write it in, write in there what you're thinking and feeling as you're going through the script, as you're responding to the characters, as you're responding to the events. Even this doesn't make sense, I don't understand why they're doing this and maybe three pages later, oh I get it. That's a response, that's an audience's response to the story. Can you do that? You need to do that because basically in the making of the film, that's what you're expecting the audience to do. You have to create something that they're going to do that. And this, your emotional journey through the film is sort of a guide for where you want to do it. Actually what you want, as since you can only make the film for one person, you, you want to create something on the screen that now does the same thing to you now as that script did the first time you read it. That's your goal. It sounds like you're meditating on the script. You know there's a yeah. term monkey mind in meditation. Yes. So it sounds almost like the monkey mind is the director's voice yes. in your in your ears. Yes. And you've got to get rid of that. Yes. You have to and this it also applies to actors, producers, anybody else. Everybody starts shifting into their role. Actors will read it and go, "Oh, I could do that." Oh, oh I don't know how I would do it. suddenly as an actor, you're not giving the, the story a chance to impact you. You're not giving those characters a chance. You're getting, you are getting in the way. So you're, you're right, it's sort of meditative, shutting up the monkey mind, shutting down the director, actor, producer, writer, voice in your head, and just allowing, allow yourself, like a meditation, allowing yourself to just respond to what's coming to you. Can you do that? It's really, really hard. I would imagine it would almost behoove someone to not be at home, it sounds like, to read something in another setting because they'd be too distracted. Is that something you advise or to get out of their own way but if you're at home and then you see, oh, the cat's water needs changing mm -hmm. or different, it, you're not going to be in the story. Possibly, okay. yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think as an individual you have to say where can I, under what circumstances can I experience this script as purely as possible. Okay. Now I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one yeah. way. 
this is really so, sound weird, but it can work. Have somebody read it to you. And now you're not reading. Now you're listening. Now you're hearing a story told. Now, that may work better for you. I mean, if I said to Elsha, if I said, Elsha, can you just read this scene to me? Now I'm hearing it. I'm, I just want to get it. I want it to come at me in a different way. And so do you have a list of, let's say, emotional words that you want to jot down so that you're getting out of the director, a.k.a. monkey mind, and jotting down the emotional language? It's sort of... I'm sort of, I don't know if they're emotional words. There's a shorthand that I have when I read a script um, that I understand. Um, I can tell you one, one thing. If I'm reading and something doesn't make sense, one word will do it. I write in, really? With a question mark. <laughs> I go, really? You're going to go, that, that's what's going to, no, that's, so that, that's, that's me tracking where my mind, so next time I'm reading through, I, and I, I go, I can see right there I had that question. So right there I had confusion or disconnection or disassociation. Not, I'm not saying this is good or bad. That's just what I did. What I did. Now someone else may not. Or I may read it again and go, oh, yeah, I can see why I did that. But now I can see it's not a problem. Whatever. I'm, I'm, I may have a different relationship to it. Another way to do it, let's say I read a script and Elsha hasn't read it. And um, <clears throat> I may say, let me tell you the story. Now I'm going to tell her, I'm not going to read it to her, I will tell her the story. In fact, we did this the other day, I started to tell her this. Now in my telling of the story, now I'm in a storytelling mode and I'm trying to, I'm focusing on taking her on a journey through it. I'm not really directing yet, and I'm getting her response. So that's, that's another relationship, again, back to the story. I'm, I'm not in the process of directing at all. I'm trying to stay as close to the story, to understand. And I think that the most difficult thing we have is I have a script. My job eventually, I can't do it on the first reading, my job eventually is to understand where the writer was coming from what the writer was intending to do. And I really can't get that to that without talking to the writer eventually. But if prior to that, with the script wash, I have to establish my relationship to the story, my fascination for it, or my, what I'm intrigued with, what I'm confused about. I have to get my relationship in place and then go to the writer and then start to understand where he or she was coming from, even why she wrote the story what she was trying to say, what she wanted to say, why this character, why is this woman the protagonist? Oh, I see. Well, that's what, I, in other words, I have to get back to their source, not just the script. Again, this gets back to assumption we were talking about before. I can follow into the trap of assu assuming this is what she was trying to do. I can't tell you the number of times I've read a script and it's very clear. I can make an assumption. I think I know what the, the writer is trying to do here what the writer's trying, the story they're trying to tell. And I meet and talk with the writer. I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Now, they, did they tell the story that they wanted to? No, not at all. Is the story they wanted to tell interesting? Absolutely. Did I miss it? I totally missed it. But let's go back to the source. That's the story you want to tell? Okay, there was a lot of things in here that are off track. The story they want to tell is way more important than the story they have told. And we're trying to bring those two together. So that's the, that's the danger of assumption. And if I start directing in my mind before I've even had that conversation, I'm off down on a track that eventually the writer's going to say, no, no, that's not what I wanted. And the reason I made a mistake is I didn't check to see really where the writer was coming from. So you do the script wash. You, you read it for a sort of emotional effect. You talk to the writer. And then at what point do you then turn on the director's mind? and say, okay, now I'm reading the script with an intentional director's mind turned on? I would say, first of all, um, the director's mind sort of starts to seep in pretty early. And as I said before, it's hard to keep it quiet because that director mind wants to direct. It's a very eager little puppy in there going, <laughs> we have a script, we have a story, let's make it. Um, <clears throat> 
but dur during the, the process of working with the writer, the director's mind is working. Uh, it's working a lot because I can hear from the writer what he or she is trying to do, the story they're trying to tell, and my director m mind is now thinking, okay, how can I facilitate that? Um, or what's in the way of that? Or how can we explain that? Or does this mean we need another scene? Now I'm sort of writing a little bit, but I'm not writing. And, or I can hear what the writer wants, and I go, okay, that's a great idea. I have no idea how to get that on the screen. It's a great idea, but that just doesn't seem feasible to do that. So now I have to talk to the writer and actually say that. Now the director mind is working because the director down here, down the, the stream, is saying, we've got a problem trying to make this. Let's see if we can solve that here with the writer. So the director's mind is working rather soon. Once we get to a script that um, I feel is very strong, I'm confident about it, although it's not the final draft. As you probably know, the final draft of the script is when the picture is locked at the end <laughs> because the script is always shifting because it's an organic entity. Um, but once we get to the point where we think we can go into production to really consider what the producers were going into production, now the director's mind is really working a lot. And now it has to start to take over because now the directorial process is moving forward. Now I'm thinking about thinking more about, even though I've thought about it before, I'm thinking about casting and I'm thinking about locations and elements and the team that I want to put together to help tell this story. But I have to make sure that I have a script that is the strongest I believe we can do. By we, I mean myself, the writer, producers, whoever else is involved at that time. And it could be a lot of people that they're all, they're all involved. That We've got the best we can do, knowing it's going to change and believing that the change will only be for the better, whatever it is. Then, then I can start to take over this as the director and start making demands and, and influencing it from a director's point of view.